of software and uh, medical devices, as some people were already saying, and as we uh, experience every day, it's a really uh, moving and shaking, uh, shaking area. It's moving because of the continuous uh, developments that we have. It's shaking because of increased uh, enforcement uh, and also uh, <coughs> the legislators that uh, keep trying to uh, move uh, the goalposts. So there's, there's a lot to do, all of which we will uh, address here. It's very interactive, so please, if you have any questions, uh, uh, ask them uh, whenever they uh, come up. The program for today, that's in the, uh, it's, uh, it's in the booklet. We uh, put all the slides uh, in the booklet. So what we'll do is we'll first have a presentation by uh, Robert Houtenbos, uh, right over here. Robert is an uh, independent uh, and health uh, consultant with a lot of uh, uh, experience and past, you could say, in big M health, uh, in the uh, insurance, uh, healthcare insurance industry, for example. And he will speak about uh, compliance by design. Very important because what we uh, often find is that companies, uh, well, they have an idea, and then they start off and they go do some stuff, and in the end they arrive at some kind of result. But uh, you never know. Uh, it's a bit like uh, the, uh, uh, it's a bit like uh, almost a Lewis Carroll uh, quote: uh, "If you don't know where you're going, you might not end up there." Then uh, we from Axel will talk a bit about, uh, about medical devices regulation and about the latest enforcement initiatives in the uh, Netherlands. And then we'll have Hans van Dillman uh, from Dillman Regulatory Services, uh, a uh, medical technology uh, regulatory consultant uh, that we work with, uh, talk about uh, how you should do this whole process of CE marketing for a medical device. So, without further ado, uh, Robert, I'd uh, like to uh, hand over to you. I'm happy you can still stand under the circumstances. <laughs> I will explain. You will explain. Thank you. <coughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Robert Houtenbos. Thank you for the introduction here. Um, please raise your hand if you cannot hear me. Uh, <laughs> Um, as Eric says, uh, I am an independent mobile health consultant, or uh, broader speaking, a, a general a digital health. Um, and my services range from uh, designing digital strategies um, to portfolio management, project consultancy, and then uh, the, uh, really the, work, the feet in clay work, the implementation, and uh, I'm also a contractor uh, with a broad network all kinds of possibilities and everything you need in the process. And uh, post-development uh, services as well, because uh, you have to know something, how do you uh, put it on the market, and uh, what are the best needs to do so. And, um, that's what I do. Um, I started my mobile health work in the uh, insurance industry uh, at PZ, one of the largest uh, health insurers sure, sure in the Netherlands. Uh, and in 2009, um, I was a, uh, an internet manager, and we sold uh, health insurances, but there was only uh, a few months a year uh, work. So uh, the other half of the year, I could do uh, innovation uh, and innovative and new stuff. Uh, and one of them is um, social media and healthcare and uh, mobile health. Uh, Myself, as a consumer, I am also a very uh, savvy uh, M-Health user. Uh, for instance, the quantified self movement, the, the movement where you log everything about your life. Uh, this is one of my uh, Nike uh, stats from the month of May. Um, you see, I am very specialized in uh, not setting my goals too high, because so I can reach 21 out of 31 <laughs> goals, uh, because I want to have success. Um, I also use uh, a broad a range of apps. Uh, I saw the, attending, uh, the, the list of uh, attendees and I saw some Philips people also. You are nodding. Um, so this is the app I use regularly to uh, check, my, check my heart rate and my breathing rate. Mm -hmm. um, and um, what Eric was referring to, uh, I'm still standing because uh, I uh, had a little baby girl uh, the other week. Uh, and I used mobile health or digital health uh, as a sport 
uh, in that process too, because um, <laughs> my girlfriend was carrying almost 42 weeks, and then you see the difference between healthcare from a consumer perspective and a professional perspective, because they see risk and guidelines, and I, I see health, and I want to uh, sustain uh, the health. Health is my starting point, and not risk or uh, guidelines. So uh, we all managed to uh, get a good result, thanks to this is the website of the Association for uh, Gynecologists, and they have published all their uh, guidelines. So I knew what the gynecologist was going to say to the government before he actually did, uh, four, five, <laughs> six hours later, uh, uh, and I could have uh, already anticipated uh, my next move, because they wanted to do a uh, Sexio Cesario, uh, I think three times, and uh, we managed to uh, we <laughs> managed to get a natural birth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, fuck you. I can relate. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, this is uh, uh, I, I, all the drugs they tried to inject into my girlfriend. I I look uh, I look them up. Yeah, uh, yeah. This is a uh, oxytocin. Uh, um, uh, products and uh, uh, well, I, I was really curious well, what are they administering. And this is the end result. My uh, <laughs> uh, postpartum, uh, uh, it didn't stop, and I noticed I didn't use the traditional uh, channels, the, the, the supplies by, brand, by health brands uh, channels. I used YouTube because uh, our baby didn't latch. It's a uh, <laughs> very nice thing. Uh, to the breast, so uh, we looked at what's the most natural way to breastfeed. You do not learn it in the hospital, they always show the traditional way. So this is an alternative way, and it, it worked very good. And now we uh, still use the quantified cell movement, and now we use the smallness app <coughs> to register uh, lactation, diapers, uh, naps, uh, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and you can see here that my girlfriend was really. Uh, it was driving her nuts, and this day there was the, the gloom of a, of, of a rhythm. <laughs> uh, like, but the next day uh, it was all messed up again. So uh, we're in the midst of this uh, too. Uh, so that's me, but uh, what does the market do? Um, well, as my uh, uh, profession suggests, I uh, mainly focus on uh, mobile applications. So I'll give you a brief overview. Uh, you can read it afterwards. Uh, I'm in your seat, so I won't go by it uh, word by word. Uh, what, what's interesting is that um, there's supposed to be a over ten million dollar market. Sure microphone for the a rock star experience. Great. <laughs> Thank you, Amsterdam. <laughs> um, a ten million dollar market. This is better. Um, so. Um, I do not notice it because every uh, mobile health developer I know um, is struggling uh, to keep uh, his head uh, uh, above uh, the rising water. Um, so this is not only healthcare, uh, of course. Uh, healthcare uh, categories in the iTunes uh, App Store are uh, placed 14 and 17, uh, with let's say 5% of all medical apps are um, uh, health and medicine related. So, oh my god, it's. Um, and uh, because, as shown here, every day 818 new app submissions are received by Apple. 5% uh, that means like 40 new uh, apps are added to the directory every day. So uh, it's quite difficult to keep up as a consumer, as a professional, and also as a uh, legislator. <laughs> um, and it rem reminded me of the Gardner hype cycle. I'm, I'm sure you've all heard of it. Um, and this is a um, a plot that Ohio of Texture Change made. Texture Change is a, um, a mobile health company uh, who are active in Africa. And they use uh, SMS based uh, services. Um, and I think they are a few years ahead of us because uh, Africa, there is no infrastructure uh, and uh, mobile health benefits from it because uh, I think the Dutch uh, infrastructure. It's very solid, but it also hinders us in uh, making big progress in mobile health. Um, and you see, um, there was a big, huge expectations, of course, in 2010, 
and then the trough of dissolution um, um, because the focus on regulatory and also uh, evidence-based uh, medicine. And uh, they expect in uh, 2016 to reach the plateau of productivity. Uh, I think in the Netherlands we could use, we could easily add a few years uh, to that. Sorry. Um, FDA uh, a few years ago, or last year, they said that the wild west of medical apps. Um, and you saw the spasm, everyone was getting into, whoa, whoa what's happening? It's the wild west, uh, where's the sheriff? Um, and they uh, started to behave like sheriffs, of course. But uh, later more on that. And here in the Netherlands, a doctor, healthcare inspectorate, um, I visited them uh, recently, and they said they had a database uh, consisting of over more than 500,000 records of uh, potential medical devices available on the Dutch market. Uh, because, um, well, in, in the case of uh, medical apps, uh, we, we can also download uh, an Arab app or a, an uh, Israeli app. As a consumer, I'm already wondering, whoa, is it safe? Uh, so, are really good. Yeah, <laughs> I'm very enthusiastic about it, but regulatory, I don't know. Um, the uh, Royal Society of uh, Medical Medical Professionals have uh, conducted a survey and uh, they said, well, there is a, a pretty good chance of uh, elevating it in the Netherlands because uh, almost 80% of uh, doctors already use apps for information and there are really simple apps like reference guides or dictionaries, stuff like that. Uh, or uh, anatomy uh, um, 3D uh, images uh, and uh, as you can see only 6% of doctors stimulate self-monitoring. One of the things uh, that happened to us in the hospital was we uh, uh, were connected to a CTG to uh, uh, monitor the heart, baby heart rate uh, but everything was fine you know I said well okay we're going home. No you're not going home. Uh, well we'll have to wait here. Yeah. You have to wait here because uh, insurance says you cannot leave the premises. Uh, so uh, I really wanted to do it at home. Um, why I use it? Because um, it makes me happy. That's the bottom line. And I think all of you uh, who are designing uh, medical software should have that <coughs> number one goal. Make your customer happy. Uh, like Zappos uh, did. Uh, read a book from uh, Zappos. Uh, focus on uh, uh, consumer happiness um, and uh, I also it also saves me money but that's not the most important uh, reason why I use it so um, designing for compliance uh, uh, I thought well, well what is compliance so I looked it up and it said one adherence to laws regulations and requirements okay that's great um, as you have noticed I'm not a lawyer um, so, how many of you here uh, have legal backgrounds? Can, we, can I see some hands? Oh, not too many. Okay. I think maybe 15% of the audience. Okay. The rest of you are salespeople? <laughs> <laughs> Developers? How many of you are in the midst of development? Oh, not even the majority. Um, and I am aware, because I also uh, develop a lot of uh, apps, I am aware of regulations. And this is uh, all kinds of laws that we have to deal with um, in, in the Netherlands. Uh, and of course, the, the real hot uh, CE mark uh, at the moment. Um, and But CE is not only for uh, legal people uh, and inspectorates. Uh, CE also is a uh, thing that is um, well, almost a synonym for quality at the moment. And uh, the winner of the Health App of the Year award this year was uh, looking at a doctor, a triage app uh, from a GP in Apeldoorn. And uh, the jury announced the winner by saying it's the only one that, uh, that uh, has a CE mark. Mm -hmm. So um, it's also a, a unique selling point, it seems. Um, and it also, but it also helps you as a developer to uh, maintain and sustain quality in your processes, but more of that later. And it's a, a source of pride as well, because uh, uh, this is the Mutikna Doctor app, and they have a really uh, big <laughs> CE sign in it. They take great pride in it. 